Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, turn to discuss further into parametric curves, and now go over example seven of the example series. And uh, in this in this example, we'll look at the cycloid, uh, which is a very famous shape, and I briefly talked about it in my earlier video, and I'll put the link below as well in the description. So let's go over this example. So the curve traced by uh, traced out by a point on the circumference of a circle as the circle rolls along a straight line is called a cycloid. Yeah, for example here, if you have a circle here, so let's say the point P is on the circumference of this blue circle, and as you rotate it, this, uh, this point eventually gets to here as you move it. So you rotate and then you move it this way, this point's gonna be tr uh, over here, and if you trace it, you get a curve that looks something like this, like arches. And here's a Wikipedia of it. Yeah, here, just to show you a visual representation, so it looks something like this, it just rotates uh, around, and you get that shape where the point is on the circumference. Yeah, so now we're asked, if the circle has radius r and rolls uh, along the x-axis, and if one position of p is the origin, find parametric equations for the cycloid. Yeah, so now let's look at the solution of this. So basically, we choose, first thing we're gonna do is choose as a parameter the angle of rotation theta of the circle, and we'll choose that uh, basically when theta equals to zero is when p is at the uh, is at the origin. Again, recall that with parametric equations, you always need to have a parameter. In this case, we'll just call that uh, theta. So what we have, for example, if we're at the origin, let's say we have the at the origin initially. So we have the x and y axis like this. Yeah, so we have P is at the origin, and then this is at the circumference of a circle. So let's say we have a circle that looks like this. So what we end up having here is, well, this is P. And initially the angle, let's say from the circle to this point, we have theta equals to zero. And then as you rotate, as this moves across here while it's rotating, so while it's rotating but moving to the uh, to the other side, this point's going to be moving along on the circle to say somewhere over here, but uh, but it's going to move along to the right. And for example, the angle that we are going to be looking at is basically uh, this kind of angle, where you have this right angle. So then this angle here is theta. So that is the angle that we are dealing with. So that's what this parameter is defined as. Yes, yeah, so now let's uh, suppose a circle has rotated through uh, theta radian, so not zero, but assume that theta is between zero and pi over two, in other words, 90 uh, degrees. So in this example, if we just draw this out, this will make more sense. So let's say we have the x and y axis like this, x, y, and then let's say this is at the zero point. Yeah, this is at the origin, and then let's say that the, it has rotated across to somewhere like this. And let's draw a circle like that. And uh, yeah, this point here says it's always, so we always have a point on the x-axis because you're rolling the circle around it. And let's assume that, that the initial point P was here. So it was originally on uh, the origin and then it's rotated. Yeah, it's rotated from the origin, and then if we were tracing the path, so the path again would look like here. I'll draw this in red, so it goes from the origin through this point, like that, and then it goes somewhere, yeah, something like that there. Yeah, so now what I'm gonna do ne next is, well, at this point here, I'm gonna call this point T, and then let's just go with the center uh, of the circle. Let's say the circle is somewhere over uh, here. And here I just fix, fix up the circle to make it slightly uh, better looking here. And let's just say again, this is the center point. Let's draw it somewhere here. And we'll call this the center of the uh, circle. And now if we draw a line from P to here, and again, we know the radius is R. And, and also now draw from here to here. Uh, assume this is a perfectly, yeah, this is a perfectly straight line across. Yeah, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a perpendicular line on this line here, just so we have something that looks like this. And then at this point here, I'll call Q, just to make it easier to reference. Yeah, now the next step is, that now that we have, uh, have these three points, or four points, P, C, Q, and T, uh, the next thing we should note is that because the circle has been in contact with the line at, at all times, actually, 
we see that the horizontal distance it has traveled from the origin must be the arc length from uh, P to T. For example, uh, when this was at the origin, uh, this was all the way here. So all we have to do is, is just rotate back over here. So then basically when you move the circle over to here, the total distance that, that you're traveling from here to here has to be, well, the same as this arc length across here. We'll call this uh, A. Yeah, so then this has to be equal to A here. Because it's just on the circle, it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, just, it's always on it, so you're just moving it the same distance like that. And yeah, you can see this again in that uh, animation here, that as you can see, the point on the curve, the full length it's traveling is actually the same as the full rotation of the circle, or the uh, basically the circumference of the circle. Yeah, so thus what we have is this length has to be A, and I wrote it there, and I'll because I'll write down what it equals soon. So also now recall from my earlier videos on the definition of radians, what I showed was that if you had an arc like this, and then it's whatever this uh, this angle is in radians, theta, and if you had a radius R like that, this is A. So by definition, the arc length is equal to R and then times it by theta, where theta is in radians. Again, I'll write uh, theta is in radians. Just write equal sign like that, just set to radians. And that's uh, by definition. Yeah, so thus what we end up having is, so thus for our case A is equal to the total distance from well, 0 to T, same thing as writing O t like that. This is usually how you write distance, so o t or 0 t, whatever that one is. And then this equals 2 by definition, the radius times by the angle between, so r theta. So in this case here, this is our theta like that. So that's r theta there. Yeah, so then this total distance here is just r theta. Yeah, so therefore the center of the circle C is, well, R theta and R, because the distance from the X coordinate is R theta, and then the total distance here is just R. So that's just uh, from zero, from T to C is just R over here. Yeah, so at this point here, the coordinates are R theta and then R. So that's at the very center there. So now if we let the coordinates of P be X, Y, then we can solve for the values of x, y, and I'll draw that in a bit. So at this point, let's say here, or oh, this distance is x, and then this distance is y. I'll move the a away, I'll put the a over here. Yeah, so then this distance, uh, this point p is at uh, this point, and the coordinates are just x, y of it. So now we can just basically need to solve for x and y. So what we'll do is write, well, x is simply equal to, this point is gonna be equal to, well, r theta, minus by this point across here. And now this point here is the same as, well, this point here, and we'll call this distance from P to Q. So absolute value P, Q, like that. So before we can uh, solve it, notice here the relation from uh, P and Q is, well, absolute value P, Q is equal to, and here we have uh, actually, before we get to that, we know that the relation here, this is a right angle triangle, and we have theta and we have r. So the relation sine theta is simply equal to uh, opposite, which is pq, over hypotenuse, which is r. And you can learn more about this in my earlier video on trigonomic functions. So we have this. So then what we end up having is uh, distance x is going to be equal to the full distance 0 t or o t subtracted by this distance which is this one right here absolute value uh, p q or just the distance p q like that so it equals the distance from uh, difference from p t I mean uh, from 0 t minus distance from p to q like that and we know distance from 0 t is just r theta and now when we subtract the distance PQ, well, we know this relation, we could just move the R to this side. So what we have is R sine theta. And we can, well, just take the R out. So we have R and then theta minus sine theta, like that.
and we can just uh, box this in. So we have our equation for x in terms of our parameter theta, which is pretty cool. So now the next one we could just solve for y. So y is equal to, in a very similar fashion, well, the y is going to be uh, the full distance r. And now all we're going to do is subtract this distance across this point here. So when you subtract this one, this one will call this distance here c q. And if we take this to see the relation instead of sine, because we, this is the adjacent, we have cosine theta. I'll move this a bit higher. Cosine theta is equal to, and now we have c q like that over r, so hypot I mean adjacent over hypotenuse. Just move this up a bit higher. Yeah, so that is what we have. Just move it a bit higher. So that's the cosine relation. So then what we were going to do is r subtracted by this distance cq, which we can just move the r to this side and get r cosine. So we have this distance. Well, this is going to be just r minus. Or just for completeness sake, we'll write the distance from c to t which again is the same thing as r. So c all the way to t is just the radius r. And then what we're going to do is subtract this by, and this was c q, distance from the center to q, and this equals 2, so ct is just r. And now we just have r cosine theta. And then again, we could take the r out, so we have r 1 minus cosine theta, like that, which is pretty cool. So now that we have the uh, parametric equations, actually. Yeah, so therefore, to just sum this up, the parametric equations of the cycloid are x equals to r theta minus sine theta. Write this theta neater. And then we have y is equal to r and then 1 minus cosine theta, like that. And where, f where theta is just an element of all real numbers, usually just how you write it. So theta could be any real number. This is usually how it's written, like that. Yeah, now going further, uh, one arch of the cycloid comes from one rotation of the circle and, and is described by, well, theta between 0 and 2 pi. And I've already shown you that in the uh, animation on the Wikipedia. And we can again see this, so just to show you again. So at this point here, as it does its full rotation, it goes all the way back to the center. So then this is from when theta does a full 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So uh, further into this, so also although we derive these parametric equations for the case where uh, 0 is between, yeah, between 0 and uh, uh, pi over 2, and uh, again I just changed the uh, uh, less than sine the greater or equal to signs, uh, to make these just uh, like that. Yeah, because we didn't look at what happens when theta is equal to 0 or pi over 2. But, uh, but it can be seen that these equations are still valid for other values of theta, and I will cover this in a later video, so stay tuned for that, just to show you that it doesn't matter uh, in what kind of angle theta is, it will still work, uh, these equations. And also, although it is possible to eliminate the parameter theta to form an equation with only x and y, the resulting Cartesian uh, equation, this is just uh, when you have an xy axis, I mean just an xy uh, equation form without this parameter theta, is in fact very complicated and not as convenient to work with as the parametric equations. The result is the following where we have x equals 2 r cosine, an inverse cosine of 1 minus, uh, this is going to be y over r. And then we subtract by square root y. And then this is 2r minus y. Let's put the square root back like that. And as you can see, this is much more complicated than our parametric equations. And I will, but, uh, I will still derive this in another video, as well as the history of the cycloid, which is pretty cool, and who invented it, etc. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, you can see the difference between the, these equations and this one, just r theta minus sine theta, and this one's r1 minus cos theta. So yeah, this is much more complicated looking. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned, and uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.